Hey there! Data-driven programming is amazing because of how transparent it is. I can improve my understanding of what I'm building simply by looking at, copying, pasting, and shuffling data around. And Clojure is great for this. In addition to the REPL, there are tools like Mores, Portal, and Clerk that can all visualize your data on demand. Now, one thing I personally enjoy about web development is the DevTools panel. It's just always there, effortlessly available. What if that panel could channel our app's data too, point and click style? Well, that's what Datasbecs does, and in this video, I'll show you how. This is a sample application I built for the Replicant website, and over here in DevTools, there's a panel called Datasbecs. What you're looking at now is the vector of maps that powers this website. I can click into each map, and in each map, I can click into a key, and then I can click into the list of entries that contains. And all the while, Datasbecs builds a path on top here that you can use to navigate your way back. On the right side of each row, you'll see this little button. If I click it, it's gonna copy the entire data structure that this row represents, even if this is just a preview. After having copied it, I can go down and paste, and here is the entire map at this position. Next up, we have the tic-tac-toe tutorial from the Replicant website, and this app stores all its state in an atom. If you tell Datasbecs to inspect an atom, you get the same data browser from before, but this time it will update whenever the atom changes. So if I play the game a little bit, you can see changes occurring inside the browser. When inspecting an atom that changes over time, you'll see this audit tab appear up here. And if you click it, you can see all the changes that were made to the atom, when they happened, and what kind of changes occurred. And if I open one of these, I'll see the exact diff that was made in this point in time. And I can even click Browse this version, which will pop up a second browser that allows me to view the contents of the atom at this particular time. So now I can compare and contrast. In this case, the game was won. In this case, it wasn't. When I'm done, I can just hit the X to close the panel. This app also uses a view model that it computes from the store. So if I start the game over and we add a data specs inspect call to the view model, I now get two panels, the app state and the UI data. And if I click, you'll see both updating because we're now calling data specs inspect on every render with the view model. And I can go in here, check out the top line, see that two of them only have a content, which would be the icon. And the third one is clickable and has this on click action. A lot of effort was put into making the browser as useful as possible with as little configuration on your end as necessary. If I go in here, you will see a vector that's being rendered different from other vectors because Datasbecs recognizes this as hiccup. And in fact, if I click into the hiccup, it's going to automatically switch over to the source view, which is a better way to view hiccup than in this dictionary view. Here we have the Replicant form tutorial site that allows me to maintain a practice log. I can go and edit things. This app stores its state in DataScript. And of course you can inspect Datasbecs connections as well. When you do, you get this custom Datascript view. So I can check out the schema of the database. I can browse the entities that are stored in my database. And I can check out the raw indexes if I want to. Here is a slightly more interesting Datascript database. It has entities of different kinds, and you can browse them by their uniqueness attribute. So if I click this one, I see all the movies in the database, and then I can go up here and click the table view to view them in this table instead, where you can sort on the different attributes, and then I can still click on each one of them to look at a single movie. If we go back here and look at reviews, I'll find this review and see that review slash movie is a reference to a movie. So if I click it, I'm gonna navigate into the movie. And you'll also see that this movie has an attribute called review slash underscore movie. That means that these are all the reviews pointing to this movie. And I can still navigate into that collection and you'll see the path of hair gets alighted, but you can just keep going, clicking around the graph until you get tired of it. And obviously, because Datascript connections are long-lived and change over time, they also have the Audit tab that you can use to check out what's happening. And this particular app even stores metadata about each transaction. So you can see instead of the diff summary here, you'll see the action that produced the changes. And there's a small diff over here. And if I open one, I can still see all the datums that are written in this particular transaction. 
Here we have the mandatory to-do application, and this uses some front-end state, as we can see here, and then it has a networking component. And let's just investigate the front-end state first, because here there is a uh, inst for when the app started. I can click it to get more information about the date. There's also a user object here that has a token, which is being recognized as a JSON web token. The token is very opaque, so it's been elided, but since DataSpecs knows what a JSON web token is, it can decode it for you. So you can just click it, and then you'll have access to the entire token, the signature, and even the claims inside the token, which can be really quite useful. Now, if I click this button here, the app is going to fetch to-dos from the server, and then we can take a look inside the query log, and we can see that there's been one query for the to-do items, and uh, it was successful at this point in time. You can see here's the results that we fetched. Obviously, this app is fetching queries from the server, so the client-side state is really only half the picture. We can add data specs inspect to the server-side atoms as well, and boom, now I have three panels, one for the front-end state and two for the back-end state. So if I go over here to create a new one, you can see the front-end state updating immediately, and when I save it, you can see the back-end state updating immediately. And now you can see the store also has some metadata, and that's used in the audit log to describe the change that was made. Create to do, showcase the data browser. Here's the diff, and this, remember, is from the backend. You can see the NREPL port up here. And just like with the client side stuff, if you want, you can grab the backend atom, browse this version, and then have a look at what it looked like at 1345. And you can just close it when you're done. Not all websites have ClojureScript frontends or even JavaScript frontends. So this is a totally classic website that's just a Clojure backend rendering HTML on the server, sending static pages to the browser. Surely there's no use for data specs here, right? Wrong. Of course, there's a data source behind this. And in fact, there are two datomic databases. And we can call data specs inspect once again to have a look at those. Boom. Two Datomic databases inside data specs in DevTools in my browser as I'm browsing the website I'm building. That's pretty cool. And once again, just like with DataScript databases, you can browse entities by uniqueness attributes. So if I go in here, for instance, I can check out all the pages. For each page, there is some information available. This is Markdown, which you see in source view. Uh, we can go back here and check out the foods database where all the foods live. I can check out this food and uh, click references and navigate around. And once again, this is the backend datomic databases that I'm just browsing willy-nilly while working on the static website, which I think is pretty cool. And now for our final example. This is the app that I do for my day job. And here we have multiple data specs panels. So the first one is the app state. This is an atom that contains technical information about the app, network requests, and so on. There's routes in here, information about the pages we have, and so on and so forth. The next panel on the list is the DataScript database with the data that's used on the client. Once again, you can browse them by uniqueness attribute. You can check out indexes and so on. The third panel, which is currently minimized, is the hiccup panel. And this is the full hiccup that's being rendered for the content part of this page. This can be very useful if you're wondering like why is something looking the way it is or not. And if you find this to be too much visual noise, you could use the minimize button like I did initially to just hide it when you don't need it. And the final one is the backend datomic database. So I can expand this one and now I can browse my entire production database right inside the browser, side by side with the front end state. So this really brings together all the things that we looked at before, and this time for a large-ish database with real production data in it. So we can't have yet another closure data browser and not have something for taps, right? So here we go. If you do data specs inspect taps, data specs brings up another panel for you, and whenever you tap something, it shows up here. I can tap hello, let's just close these other ones. And of course you can tap anything that data specs knows how to render, like a map with a misspelled word in it. But you can also do stuff like take the result of a datomic transaction and tap that, like so. Now you get the DB after and DB before. Let's have a look at that. I can browse into, you can see that there are a different number of datums inside. 
So if I go into the after one, I'll see the entire database after the transaction was applied. And here you can see that the haha temp ID was put in and here's all the data that was put in. You know, you can really have your way with it and tap, but I think the most useful part of this is these panels that are just passively available at all times. And the idea is really that you put these inspect calls in your development setup and you commit them, and then these panels will just be permanent fixtures of your development environment. You don't have to do anything to make them appear. That's kind of the whole value proposition of this tool. I think it's pretty cool. I hope you like it, and thank you for watching this demonstration.